This is Books In Short, and you are listening the summary of how to start a conversation and make friends. Body Basics. If you sometimes feel like a wallflower, examine your body language. You may actually feel that you'd welcome getting into a conversation, but if you cross your arms or don't look. People in the eye, your body is saying otherwise. Be in tune with your body language and that of others. Be sure you have an open, friendly facial expression and a ready smile if you want to give the immediate impression that you are open to conversation. Holding a hand over your mouth might be comfortable, but consider the subconscious impression this body language gives. To project a positive attitude, and show interest in others and what they have to say, remember, soften, smile, open arms, forward lean, touch for example, a friendly handshake. Eye contact, never stare, and nod, show interest. A smile indicates general approval toward the other person, and this will usually make the other person feel more open to talk to you. When you first talk to someone, make an open, receptive impression by using a combination of techniques. For example, you don't need to consider whether it is the right time to extend your hand in greeting if you're the first to do so. If you find it difficult to look people in the eye, consciously build up your courage by making eye contact with people for very brief periods. Focus on a person's pupil, then move on to other facial features, then go back to the eyes, or shift your focus from eye to eye. Nod slightly during conversation to let people know you're interested and want them to continue talking. Conversation starters. If you're shy, think ahead about potential discussion topics. Read the headlines and browse through magazines for interesting topics you'd be willing to talk about. When you enter a room, look for people you know. Smile, uncross your arms and approach them with a, hi, didn't we meet it? Let your body language convey openness. Silence is natural in a conversation. Words don't have to be spoken all the time to communicate. Quote. To connect with strangers at an event, introduce yourself and mention how you are affiliated with the host, you'll learn about the other person's affiliation and find areas of common interests to build on as you talk. Other conversation starters include comments about the decor or the food. Ask for the other person's impressions about a program you both attended. Follow up on comments or compliments with a question. You'll certainly come across individuals who aren't interested in conversation, but most people are. E. If you don't express preferences, tastes, wants and desires, people won't know what you like or what you are seeking. Decide who to approach by looking for someone with receptive body language. For instance, if you'd like to ask someone to dance, look for people who are already moving to the music. Ask ritual questions, like, how are you doing? Or, where do you work? Or give them a compliment, you're a terrific dancer. If someone is reading a book, ask about it. Base your questions on shared circumstances, such as the neighborhood. For example, you could ask, is there a good place to eat nearby? To get more information to fuel a conversation, keep questions open-ended. Don't ask yes or no questions. Hot buttons are subjects that you or your conversational partner can really get into and talk about for an extended perio. D of time. Most people are happy to engage in conversation with someone who is sincere. A great way to exchange useful information and build a conversation is to ask people what they do. Most people are happy to talk about their work, but asking professionals for free advice is rude. Listen carefully for points of commonality or topics about which to ask more questions. Volunteer information, be a model of the friendliness you elicit. Make light chit-chat to lay the foundation for a deeper conversation. Active listening. Participate wholeheartedly in conversations. Listen for keywords that indicate what people like to do or who they know, and ask more questions. Occasionally summarize the conversation's main idea to keep the dialogue on track and reveal your interests. Speakers use iceberg statements to indicate topics they are interested in talking about in greater depth. Follow such statements up with leading phrases, such as, tell me all about it, or, what happened next. If you think a person may consider a question too personal, preface it with, I hope you don't mind my asking. If you mind being asked a personal question, respond, I'd rather not talk about that. Keep complaints, problems and gossip to yourself. Don't ask questions just for the sake of talking. Ritual questions allow you to reveal basic personal information in a natural and informal way. To join a conversation in progress, stand close to the people involved and show interest with positive body language. 
The speaker will usually include you in the conversation. Participate with comments or questions when the other speakers pause. Be circumspect about what you reveal, but remember that excessive secrecy will make people think you're shady. Volunteer information and build trust. To venture further into the conversation, be willing to assert your opinions, likes and dislikes, and to share your feelings. Give people a chance to know the real you, as you are, and without omitting relevant facts. Small talk is a very important element in conversations, and in establishing friendships and relationships. Many people have trouble remembering names. To improve your odds, listen closely during introductions, repeat the name back and ask for it again if you didn't catch it. Try visualizing the first letter of the person's name on their face. Think of other people with the same name, it doesn't have to be friends or family. When you meet an Elizabeth, for example, think of Queen Elizabeth. Repeat names during and at the end of the conversation. If you can't remember someone's name, ask the host or listen for it in conversation. Sometimes, though, you just have to admit to drawing a blank. Conversational badinage. Consider your surroundings, what kind of place it is, what brought you there, who do you know in the room or who would you like to speak to, and come up with comments or observations that you can share. You will feel less self-conscious and better able to connect with others if you look outside yourself for conversation ideas. Make your immediate surroundings your first circle of conversation, and imagine expanding circles of conversation from there. If you meet someone in a class, talk about the class first, but move on to other topics and maybe meet socially after class to continue the conversation. Another essential factor in gaining people's cooperation and receptivity is developing respect for others. Many of our attitudes and feelings are communicated without words, and how we listen to other people's ideas tells them how we think and feel about them. Find, hot-button topics, areas of interest or special events the other person enjoys talking about by engaging in small talk and asking prob. In questions, such as what do you do for fun? Or, what projects are you involved in? Find out what the two of you have in common and aim for give and take exchanges where you spend an equal amount of time speaking and listening. Balance basic information and opinion. When one person does all the talking, both people feel awkward. Be willing to talk about what's important to you because you may find someone who shares your deepest values. People are not mind readers, and unless you tell or show them what you want, they just won't know. Shorter disinterested answers may indicate that your conversation partner does not want to discuss the subject you've raised. If someone says something offensive, simply say you don't agree and change the subject. In most cases, especially after an awkward moment, the other person will gladly change the subject. The more attentively you listen to details, and remember key words and hot-button subjects, the more robust your discussion will be and the more you will be able to shape its direction. Interject short comments to encourage others to expand on a particular subject. Good conversation is like playing a game of catch. First one person has the conversational ball and talks, and then after a bit tosses the conversation to the other person. People are generally comfortable with their way of looking at the world and don't want their viewpoints challenged. People can misunderstand you if they fall into, wishful hearing, where listeners' responses are based on what they think you're saying, not on what you're really saying. Assuming incorrectly that listeners have the same background information you do is also an easy trap. Be aware when the person you're speaking with reacts defensively, he or she may prefer more discretion. Sometimes conveying thoughts and ideas is hard. Begin with easy conversation starters, such as, the reason I'm asking is. Or, I'd like to talk to you about. Convey respect and ask people for their opinions. Consider how your words will make others feel or how they might respond. Blocks to good conversation. Most people believe that arguments, which are not conversations, have winners and losers, and they'd raw. They're not participate in them. Some people think conversations also have winners and losers, and they can stumble because of their preconceived notions of identity and perspective. Try to see things from other people's points of view, even if you disagree with them. This shows that you are open to change and good ideas, and respect different opinions. When people say something you disagree with, describe your opinion. In the end, you may have to agree to disagree. Allow people to express themselves as individuals and hope that you'll get the same courtesy in Ray. Turn. Be clear about your desires and goals, no one can read your mind. 
Make it a habit to observe the four styles as you talk to the people around you at work, home, the store, everywhere. You can usually tell when conversations are winding down naturally or ending because someone has to leave. Wrap them up quickly and gracefully rather than dragging things out and causing discomfort. Summarize what you've discussed with the other person to signal the dialogue's conclusion. Say something like, it certainly sounds like you're well informed about this problem. I'll read that article you mentioned. Let the person know you enjoyed the conversation by saying, nice talking to you. If you'd like to meet again, now is the time to suggest a specific time or place. Keep your body language open and friendly, and use the person's name when you say goodbye. It has been said that a friend knows all about you, but likes you anyway. For people to remain friends and friendships to grow requires flexibility and tolerance. Quote. To end a conversation early, you can choose among a few tactics. For example, to interrupt a bore and take control of a conversation, wait for hesitation between words or sentences, and ask short, closed-ended questions. Repeat some of what's been said back to the person and wrap things up, saying, well, it sounds like you enjoy your work. Good luck on your next project. I'm going to go get a drink now, if you'll excuse me. Shake hands, say goodbye or, it was nice talking to you, and move quickly away. If you're talking with someone who's trying to manipulate you, withdraw from the conversation quickly without being forced to agree. To refuse politely to engage in further conversation with a gung-ho salesperson, simply say you're not interested, and repeat it if necessary. CHAT Styles. Conversation can be a bit like dancing. Each talking partner is like a new dance partner with a different way of conversing. One person might be shy, the next outgoing. Most people fit primarily into one of four main styles. You can reduce the ups and downs in a conversation and feel more at ease talking to people by figuring out which style you usually use, and recognizing its strengths and weaknesses. The key is to, adjust your conversation style, and give it a whirl with each different conversational dancer. Blend the strengths and weaknesses of each conversational style to play off the predominant style of the person who is talking to you. The four categories follow the acronym CHAT. Candid, these conversationalists like to get to the point. They have a competitive side that sees conversation as an opportunity to convince others of their viewpoints. They tend toward, big picture, ideas rather than details, and their honesty can be mistaken for bragging or insensitivity. Hang back, these speakers are easy to talk to because they're good listeners and low-key talkers. They loathe aggressive or competitive discussions, however, and may shut down due to fear of harsh judgment. Accurate, these folks respect details and facts, and find it easy to explain tricky subjects. They need time to warm up conversationally, however, and not everyone shares their love of detail. If this is your style, try to lighten up and become more willing to discuss subjects outside of your comfort zone. Talkative, these chatty people are outgoing and versatile in conversation, but tend to want to be the star. If this is your main style, consciously try to listen better and don't be afraid to veer into more serious terrain. Making friends. Building trust and making friends takes time and energy, but you can always strike up a conversation with people who can become excellent friends. Pursue activities you're interested in to find friendships based on common interests. Remember the basics of conversation, friendly body language, familiar questions and small talk. Listen for hot-button topics and ferret out information. Recall relevant information from previous conversations. If things are going well, suggest meeting again for a coffee. Steer the conversation to the topic of food, and suggest trying a nearby restaurant together. Friendship requires maintenance. Be available for conversation. If you decline too many invitations, acquaintances will stop inviting you to join them. Above all, to have good friends, you've got to be one yourself.